assembled here to lay the keel of a Navy submarine, the USS Nautilus. This ship will be something new in the world. She will be a atomic power. Her engine will not burn oil or coal. The heat in her boilers will be created by the same force that heats the sun. The energy released by atomic fission. The breaking apart of the basic matter of the whole universe. Think what this means. The day that the propellers of this new submarine first fight into the water and drive her forward will be the most momentous day in the field of atomic science since the first flash of light down in the desert seven years ago. Then we knew we had a bomb for war. Now we will have a working power plant for peace. Enthusiastically, construction work gets underway as an army of men start work. Electric Boat has built well over 300 submarines, more than any other company in the world. But this one is something special, because never before has anyone built a submarine to be run by atomic power. Experienced workmen, engineers, and technicians skillfully do their jobs. Meanwhile, on a nearby shipway, work is begun on the second submarine for the Navy's atomic fleet, the Sea Wolf. Now the Nautilus is ready, and the launching ceremonies are held on a misty, murky New England day, the 21st of January, 1954. The crew goes aboard. You can get some indication of the huge size of this ship by noting the number of steps they have to climb to reach her deck. A good construction job, well done by skilled craftsmen, by good men. Mrs. Dwight D. Eisenhower is the sponsor, the first time a president's wife has christened a submarine. Now for the first time, the sun breaks through the fog, an inspiring and heartwarming omen for this great occasion. It is then just a little over eight years since the first atomic explosion at Alamogorda, New Mexico. Yet already, American ingenuity has devised a way to use that incredible force for such a practical peacetime use as propulsion. As her rudder fin touches the water, the atomic era is launched. This great ship represents the inspiration and hard work of thousands of men and hundreds of thousands of hours of labor. The Atomic Energy Commission, the Navy, and American industry work together to bring the world this great forward step in the use of atomic energy. The launching cradle is cast off, and for the first time, the Nautilus becomes a free vessel. Of course, there's still a lot of work to be done. A ship just launched is not a ship ready for action. So tugboats take the Nautilus in tow and begin to nudge her toward the dock for the finishing touches. But the first chapter has been written. The world's first atomic-powered ship is afloat. Commissioning ceremonies are held some eight months later on September 30th, 1954. Normally, the Nautilus will carry 12 officers and a specially selected, specially trained crew of about 90 men. All in all, more than 100 people will live in this ship safely and comfortably, just a few feet away from the atomic reactor. John J. Hopkins, chairman and president of General Dynamics, presents the commissioning plaque to Commander Eugene P. Wilkinson, first skipper of the Nautilus. Now the Nautilus is ready for her first sea trials. This ship is about 300 feet long, the same length as a football playing field. Because her nuclear reactor does not require oxygen for its operation, as does a combustion engine, the Nautilus is able to operate at top efficiency for long periods while submerged. 
As the atomic power is applied, the commanding officer sends a truly historic message. It reads, underway on nuclear power. This is the world's first true submersible. All previous submarines have had to come to the surface frequently. The Nautilus can cross the Atlantic at full speed without surfacing for fuel. For the potential energy in a lump of uranium weighing two pounds, about the size of a golf ball, is the equivalent of 460,000 gallons of fuel oil or 3,000 tons of coal. The Nautilus is able to cruise around the world without refueling. Unquestionably, nuclear fission gives her the most powerful submarine engine ever built. A tribute to the foresighted men who planned, designed, and built her as she glides past the General Dynamics shipyard and the building ways where new units for the Navy's atomic submarine fleet are being constructed. After her trials, Navy officials called the ship's performance most satisfactory. In fact, they said the Nautilus exceeded the most optimistic expectations. Below decks, extensive planning and careful thought have gone into making the interior as livable as possible. The ship is completely air-conditioned, and because the Nautilus will do so much of its cruising underwater, it has a novel and efficient method of supplying continuous fresh air for the crew. The food, as you may guess, is the best of the best. There's a well-stocked library, a television set, room for ping-pong, and an area where motion pictures are shown. The lights, clocks, toaster, TV set, dishwasher, galleys, everything, even that record player, run on atomic power. Here's the commemorative plaque. Submariners wear a patch on their jackets, and the men of the Nautilus claim theirs is the most envied patch in the whole United States Navy. The Nautilus is unique in being the only submarine in the world with a staircase, a two-way staircase at that. This is really a livable ship. She's so powerful and so sensitive, she steers with a wheel, just like a plane. In her first few months, the Nautilus established an impressive list of achievements. On a trip between New London, Connecticut and San Juan, Puerto Rico, a distance of 1,300 miles, the Nautilus made the passage completely submerged for the entire distance. On this same trip, the Nautilus maintained an average underwater speed of 16 knots, the first time any submarine has ever maintained such a high speed underwater for longer than one hour. During her first year, the Nautilus cruised more than 25,000 miles without refueling. As time goes on, we can look for even more dramatic records to be set, as this ship keynotes the era of atomic power for propulsion. We can all be proud of the Nautilus. This ship is proof that atomic power can be used successfully to run other men of war, to run merchant ships and airplanes, someday to furnish the electricity for homes. Thus, the value of the Nautilus goes far beyond its military importance. It is a testing ground for peacetime uses of atomic power. The success of this great ship is a keystone in the Atoms for Peace crusade. We know now, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that nuclear power can be made portable, mobile. This means it can be used for many, many things. So many things in the future that the thought staggers the imagination. And American know-how and American ingenuity will bring us these peacetime uses within a very short span of years. Today is an era of naval experts analyzing and evaluating the strength and versatility of this great ship. Tomorrow, the story will be how atoms for peace can enrich our daily lives. <laughs>